This is the second video interview from the OpenStack Project Teams gathering about Zool. In the earlier video, we talked about what Zool is and how OpenStack projects interact with it. This video is about the places where Zool is being used outside of the OpenStack community. Of course, OpenStack isn't the only project with these complex interaction problems to solve. And so in recent years, Zool has become more generalized to handle these other projects. If you're watching this video and have not watched the other video about Zool, go watch that first. <laughs> and that's the video in which Zool is, is described in more detail. We're going to be talking about some of the use cases in this, in this interview. Let's start with introductions, if you all tell us who you are and uh, what projects you work on. Hi, so my name is Ricardo Carrillo. I work on the Ansible Networking Engineer team. Uh, hi, I'm Monty Taylor. Uh, I work uh, in the office of the CTO at uh, Red Hat uh, and also on the OpenStack uh, Infra team who run the CI CD stuff for OpenStack, uh, which Ricky is also on, by the way. Yep. Um, uh, and also do OpenStack SDK things and also Ansible <laughs> things and also other things. Hey, my name is Five Beer and I work for X and Product Development Cloud. I also I am involved in an uh, open source project called OPNFE which deals with integrating open source components for next generation networking. So I think the very first time I attended a talk about Zool, which, you know, who knows when that was, maybe it was in Hong Kong, um, the first question from the floor was, that's great, how can I use that on my project? And uh, I understand that's a thing now. Yeah. So tell us about that. Uh, uh, so um, we just, uh, as uh, hopefully you watched um, the, the, the Zool video already, but um, we just uh, are in the process of, we're running uh, the new V3 of, of Zool in production, and that was actually largely aimed at uh, enabling other people to use it. Uh, we didn't really, that wasn't a focus previously. Our focus was making sure that OpenStack was running, and <laughs> poor, poor guys like this one were, were charged with, uh, with running other copies of it, and, uh, and it was hard. Um, and, and he lost many years off of his life. So we, we, did, a, we did a bunch of, uh, we, we, we took that feedback and did a bunch of work to make it um, a, not just a sort of bespoke system for us, but a, a system that's aimed at uh, sort of helping arbitrary projects should be you know, easy enough to run and people can attach it to their, uh, to, to their things wherever those are, open sack related or not. Um, and I think that's, uh, that's really exciting. Can you give us some examples of, of uh, communities that are using this? Uh, yeah, maybe I yeah. can go ahead. So um, we had a need. Uh, my team writes modules, Ansible modules for managing networking devices. We had a need for have a CI to test that stuff. Um, so I started looking at Zool and Notebook because uh, I mean I was familiar with it, and um, I made the POC with just using Notebook because by the time the GitHub driver that wasn't really ready for usage, and we host in GitHub. And yeah, so it was successful, and we were using Nopal for provisioning VMs, which those VMs are network appliances images. And we coupled it with another project that is called DCI that allows us to upload test results, and that's what we've been using for a year. Um, along with that, so what we're planning to to do is that hook up uh, Zool as a third-party CI on the vendor side. So um, the, the idea is that whenever we push a change, uh, we test uh, as we, what we can possibly test on our side on VMs, but also vendors can run their tests on their infrastructure, on physical gear, and that kind of stuff that we cannot really host ourselves. Um, there's there's uh, one of the one of the really fun features, and it's also sort of Ansible related here. Uh, but we we added the ability in Zool v3 to to express change dependencies across not just across projects, but even across projects that that live in completely different places. Because um, you know it's a distributed world, and and we all have interdependencies. Uh, I have a a test job uh, going right now that. Um, uh, there's a library inside of OpenStack, as you might imagine, that knows how to talk to OpenStack clouds. And the uh, modules in Ansible for interacting with OpenStack objects uses that library. Um, so clearly changes to that library could break 
the OpenStack modules in, in Ansible, and that would be bad for Ansible users. But Ansible's managed where Ansible's managed, and OpenStack's managed where OpenStack's managed. A classic, classic issue. Um, uh, so, so we've set up a job that on uh, that runs both on changes somebody submits to OpenStack's Garrett, and also when somebody submits a pull request to Ansible, uh, as long as that pull request uh, affects the OpenStack modules, because I don't really need to run <laughs> run the tests on like you know tar um, <laughs> exactly, um, uh, and so it, it runs that that same test and, and can sort of report back to uh, to each other, and it's. Uh, you can sort of express this pull request isn't going to work until this change lands over in shade or, or anything like that. So it's been that's been really helpful for us to uh, to do in a, in a integration testing. Obviously, you can do unit testing over in, in Ansible land, but like for them to do integration testing, we'd have to in their CI system add the ability we already have in ours to spin up OpenStack clouds, and that's a bit onerous for you know for another project to do. So it's it's a, a been a good mechanism for us to uh, to collaborate with other communities and and use our resources to help test the parts of their thing that are that are relevant to us, right? So we can you know we can contribute back in, in that way and make sure that everything works. A related example from the community I am involved in, maybe I can first tell what we are doing in Open Platform for Network Functions Virtualization, which is not a friendly name for an open source project. <laughs> OpenFi uh, works on creating a reference platform for next generation networks, telecom networks, using cloud and virtualization technologies. And OpenFi, in a sense, is an integration and testing project, which we basically pull down different components from different upstream components, such as OpenStack, OpenDaylight, and so on. We put them together and see if they work well together. Because this type of end-to-end -end testing is not very uh, much done by other communities. So as part of uh, our efforts, we go work with Open Daylight community, look at what they have there. We work with OpenStack community, look at what OpenStack has there. And our developers need to work with both of these communities at least, or even more communities in certain different telco use cases. And we have a project named Service Function Chaining, which those guys are working with Open Daylight to implement some features there. But those features depend on OpenStack components such as Tacker or Neutron. And in order for that feature to work, they need to ensure that the Neutron Open Daylight driver works fine. So with the uh, driver that has recently been implemented to support multiple Garrett instances, our developers can basically create a patch in Open Daylight Garrett and put a depends on uh, reference in that patch pointing to Open Day uh, OpenStack Neutron patch. So the Zool can help us putting these different patches together and give them feedback by combining these patches. So it's basically, it's not just about end-to-end -end integration, but it also helps developers because they don't have to replicate whole setup on their workstations, and they can use CI to do that for themselves. Yeah, it's worth pointing out uh, uh, that this is, this is an area where in the past, your process might be, oh, well, this open daylight feature needs this Neutron feature, so we're gonna write the Neutron feature, we're gonna land the Neutron feature, we're gonna release Neutron, now Open Daylight's going to start working on doing that, and it'll it'll test against the release thing, and and then you go, oh well, oh crap, we didn't quite get the feature right over in Neutron. I mean, we spec'd it out, and everybody did their their work, and and we discovered something in the in the implementation, and now you're like, oh well, now we got to go fix Neutron, wait for another release, do those things, and this is this is one issue amongst the reasons that you know the like in the web dev community, they just you know then people like vendor things into their own branches, they don't want to wait on. On because it's too hard, right? Um, this allows us to to work together as communities to um, to be advised. You know, hey, here's the neutron feature. It's not even landed yet, right? Like we're we're going to verify it against the not landed feature in in Open Daylight. That doesn't mean Open Daylight's all of a sudden going to grow a dependency in a release of Open Daylight on an unreleased neutron patch. That would be crazy. But it, it helps us have that developer feedback and communication. So that we can we can iterate this and land it when it's ready, and not not get in that situation where people are landing half finished features, so that the next step in the integration can start picking it up, because that just makes things messy for everybody. Yeah. So, I, I think we, we had a measurement in OpenV Comic to see how much difference it makes doing this type of uh, things. Currently, it takes about eight months to get feedback from this integrated platform testing, 
And with Zool type of setup, this feedback time goes back to a week or something, from eight months to week. Yeah. So you can iterate yeah. things much faster, more frequent, and it's not just about fixing bugs, also you can introduce new features much faster than before. Because yeah. those things can go hand in hand and develop in parallel rather than one of them mating the other. Yeah. So yeah, I really think that you know that opens so much possibilities rather than you know just being a third party CI. I think having GitHub, Garrett, depending on this and that, it really becomes a meshing CI thing. Yeah. So it's a it's incredible how we can depend on each other's communities and move forward and really give very early feedback. That, you know, hey, you're breaking me, or it's fine, and yeah. you can go ahead. So. That, that, that is basically yeah. We are talking about this cross-community CI thing, and we as humans can communicate with each other. But this helps us to ensure that machines can talk to each other as well. So we reduce the manual intervention and let the machines do the job for us, and we focus on what really matters. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thinking and talking <laughs> as, as humans, we let the, 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 the robots talk to each other yeah. And, yeah. and whatnot. And also, I think it's uh, uh, like we, it allows us to, to, to collaborate more inter interdependently, but also it also in some ways helps us to decouple as well because that we can move faster in the individual projects because you, you don't have to get into that like that sort of traditional everything's locked down because we're gonna and you can just keep you can keep revving because you're you're actually able to the development processes of each disconnected thing have a mechanism to talk to each other you know and you know it's otherwise somebody goes off into a corner and works for six months and then makes a release that breaks everything and you're like ah. Gosh, if I, I mean, this is, you broke it, like, why? Well, I didn't know. I didn't realize that was going to break you. I didn't realize you were using that thing. And fix your stuff. And yeah, fix your stuff. And then everybody's <laughs> always in firefight mode. Oh, there's a new release. So you get like, you know, you get enterprises terrified to upgrade a piece of software and, you know, everything. That's not good for, for anybody. So it's both collaborative and, and distributed at the same yeah. time, which I think is really, uh, really great. Solves all the world's problems. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so this is already a place that you're already, already using. Oh, yeah. Too. Mm -hmm. Yep. And one of the cool things that I find very interesting in the new V3 version, uh, obviously the Azul thing is very cool, but also the so traditionally no pool, which is the provisioning mechan um, component for giving notes to Azul, has been just an office stack thing. But now the architecture has been changed, and now it has a plugin architecture. So now office stack is a driver for no pool, which is continues working for the same infrastructure the, the same way it works for us, for example, as well networking. But there's a static driver and there are more things coming like Amazon and uh, Google, Azure, yeah. you name it. So. Mac Stadium, yep. you know, because you need a Mac so Stadium driver. Yeah, for, Jim for, touched on that very briefly about, you know, removing a depend the necessary yep. dependency on OpenStack. What's the, what's the timeline on that? Is that, is that already... Done, landed in done. production. Yeah. Okay. So the thing we're waiting is actually yeah. getting new drivers in, yeah. and that's uh, there. There are a couple of patches in flag for Amazon. Oh yeah, no. Tristan has written like like all of these yeah. patches, but we 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 have a couple of final release uh, uh, tasks before we like actually tag the V three releases yeah. as ready for other people. It's running in production for us and has been for months, but like we want to make sure because this one is aimed at other people running it. We want to make sure that they're going to have a, a a good time and that we can support it in a rolling fashion moving forward. So we're cleaning up the last final thing and we're being really strict about not like keeping the line in the sand of this is what what is for the V3 release. So as soon as we've made that, then we can go in and you know land. There's, there's a whole bunch of things that people are really yeah. excited about working on next, but otherwise you know, we'll scope creep people to death and, and that, that isn't any good. So. For OpenFV, we had our prototype uh, up and running. Uh, it was around uh, November. And I want to thank you, thank yeah. OpenStack community, because there are two features that are crucial for OpenFV community. One of them is, which I already mentioned, multiple gateway supports, and the other one is the static driver. Yeah. Because OpenFV essentially brings up NFV infrastructure. We don't use, like OpenStack, we deploy yeah. OpenStack on bare metal nodes. Yeah. And because we don't have OpenStack in place, we need multiple static driver to hook our nodes, bare metal nodes to node pool, so yeah. Zool can deploy OpenStack on them. Yep. So it's basically, it, I was surprised to hear both of these features already fixed, so we need to move our prototype to the next step and try it for yep. real. 
Y- Yolanda's been been asking us for that that static node feature for a <laughs> for a while. Um, uh, so we're really glad that we could we were able to. That was yeah. that was actually on our. We're not releasing Dual without a static driver because you know the OPNFB folks. That's essential to them, and it's yeah. it, it's essential to other. Like I had I had a meeting with some people earlier today. Um, uh, two different one from ZTE in in China and uh, one from Cisco. I want to say, um, but it, we, each of them had bare metal. Uh, uh, bare metal testing needs where the the essentially the static driver was. So it's you know it's exactly like you. We, we we have a we have a relationship here, and we 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 have the ability to talk and get the the requirements. Um, and that's already there's there's several other people who are like, oh, this solves a big problem. And then somebody had a, a whole new feature that I've just discovered. And, and, you know, anyway, go try it, go use it. Yeah. So yeah. it's awesome. Yeah. It's sounds will ten native. So writing jobs. I mean, you use a playbook. Or yeah. it's the job content is the playbook and that's it was super easy to to use so it's not some complicated XML or something yeah so <laughs> you know it's uh, give it give it a spin it's not just you know a, a POC or academic kind of thing it's that it's being used by real projects so. Heav- heavily <laughs> yeah it's, it's, a, it's a big system and yeah and something I want to highlight is back to what I said earlier it's, it's not just for OpenStack no no and yeah, that you know, was. That's, yeah. I think what Fatty, you know, explained and what I'm, what I explained about my use case is that I mean, you can really adapt it to your use case. Yeah, we so. actually have one of our our cores who's here at the at the the PTG this week uh, is a is a fellow from BMW and they're using it. Their 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 use of it has nothing to do with with OpenStack whatsoever. It's they're using it to you know develop self driving cars and and things of that nature. But it's a it's a tool they. Sort of one of our early adopters, but you know they've been they've been great, and it's helping them in, in a lot of ways. So it's definitely not a um, definitely not a, an OpenStack only yep. uh, only thing, which is you know, it's good. pretty straightforward to bring up. I tried. Great, that's good to hear. Uh, it, it, it's like <laughs> I'm serious because I yeah. was like a bit afraid, like Zool, Notebook, yeah. Yeah, and this I mean, and that. I mean, but the, the, the Manual is pretty clear and steps yeah. are clear. There are even, you know, projects out there, software factory that is an installer for Zoo and yeah. Noble and all that. And yeah. there are roles in the community from Paul Belandio as yeah. well that Wind have been using that. Yeah. I mean, it's not like, yeah. uh, you know, rocket science. I mean, yeah. you, you you have installed it for it. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, thank Great. you so much for yeah. your time. Thank you. Yeah. Thank uh, you. Good luck the rest of this week in your discussions. Sweet. We'll see you in six months. Yeah. All right. Yay. Hopefully. Thank you.